I got my hands on four thermal scopes ranging from the lowest resolution all the way up to the highest resolution money can buy. Let's talk about it. I have seen some people try to compare thermal resolutions before, but I haven't seen somebody do a comparison with the same base magnification. It's always a 1x640 or a 4x280 or something being compared and never the same magnification. I think it's time somebody did a proper comparison with all the thermals at the same base magnification. So I reached out to ATN and they were willing to provide four thermal scopes at four different sensor resolutions, all with the same base magnification. We have three of the LTV series of scopes at 256, 320, and 640. And for our super fancy 1280, we have the Thor 5 XD. Those numbers, 256, 320, 640, and 1280, refer to the sensor resolution. Right now, this is a 4K YouTube video, 3,840 pixels wide and 2,160 pixels tall. The best thermal sensors on the market are 1280 by 1024, which looks like this. 640 is 600. 40 pixels wide and 480 tall like this 320 is 320 pixels wide 240 tall like this 256 is 256 pixels wide and 192 tall like this if you notice the video world refers to resolution by the width a 720p video is a 1280 by 720 resolution. In the thermal world, they use the first number, the bigger number. A 640 thermal is 640 by 480. Kind of misleading if you're used to the video world like most people are. Some companies are also misleading in their marketing saying things like 4K display or 1080p or HD display or something. It doesn't really matter what display resolution you have on the back of your scope as long as it's the same or higher as your thermal sensor. You can can have a 4K display on the back of a 640 thermal sensor, but at the end of the day, you're only going to see thermal images at that 640 resolution. It's like watching an old 480p YouTube video on a 4K computer monitor. You can have the fanciest display in the world, but you're not getting more information. What matters is the thermal sensor resolution, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let's start with the basics. Everything emits infrared radiation. There is a formula to calculate this called Planck's Law that I'm not going to explain. Basically, the hotter an object is, the more IR energy it emits, and the hotter an object is, the shorter the wavelength. Thermal scopes have a special sensor that detects these IR wavelengths. Normal camera sensors detect visible light at around 320 to 750 nanometers. Thermal camera sensors typically go between 8,000 and 14,000 nanometers. This is well beyond the 750 nanometers at the end of the visible spectrum. Each pixel in the thermal sensor measures measures how much IR energy hits it. This happens for each pixel many times a second. Typically, the refresh rate is between 30 and 90 hertz or 30 to 90 times a second. The electronics translate that energy reading for each pixel into a temperature value or a relative heat intensity value. There are image processing techniques that then display this on the screen. Typically, colors or shades are used to convey this information. For example, one of the common color palettes is white hot, where the higher temperature something is, the more white it appears on the screen. Colder stuff is more black. Thermal technology is different from something like a PVS-14 or night vision device. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds of how night vision works in this video, but basically analog night vision takes existing photons, amplifies them in something called an intensifier tube, and then converts that into light we can see from a phosphor screen. Digital night vision sensors work differently, but basically a CMOS or CCD sensor detects the same wavelengths as analog night vision. Visible light is 380 to 750 nanometers. Night vision operates between 400 and 1100 nanometers, and thermal operates 3000 to 14000 nanometers. For some more context, your IR laser on your rifle is probably around 800 nanometers, and the human body IR that is just emitted from your heat is around 10,000 nanometers. Big difference. What this means practically when comparing thermal and night vision is night vision needs some ambient light to work. You can get IR flashlights to provide that light for you if you're in a basement or something, but if you're in pitch darkness, like under a tree canopy on a dark night, 
it means your night vision isn't going to work very well. Thermal can see in total darkness because everything is emitting thermal radiation. Some major benefits of night vision is that it can see through glass and read text on a sign or object. IR heat doesn't travel well through glass, so windows are basically walls when using a thermal. And because the letters on a piece of paper are often the exact same temperature as that piece of paper, thermal can have a hard time reading that. But this isn't a thermal versus night vision video. This is a thermal resolution video. There are basically three thresholds that I'm going to define. Detection, recognition, and identification. Detection is where you can tell something is there. I see a warm blob next to that tree. Recognition is when you can tell what type of object something is. That is a person next to the tree. It's not a deer, it's not a raccoon, or something else. Identification is when you can make out the fine details. That is a person holding a rifle, he has a backpack on, and he is looking in my direction. To test this, I sent a friend walking their dog down a bike path. This let me keep a straight view on them the entire time and provide some additional bystanders for some more context at different distances. I built this scopinator mount to aim them all in relatively the same direction. All of these scopes were set to the same sensitivity and basically the same settings across the board. I tried my best to adjust the focus on all these as the distances changed, but apologies if the focus isn't totally perfect. What I found was that at a thousand yards, I totally lost him on everything, which surprised me. Some manufacturers claim like 2,000 to 3,000 yard detection ranges. Now, if you were on top of a mountain, looking down into a valley that had everything the exact same temperature except for one hot buffalo, I could understand that number. But in the real world, the sun heats things up at different rates and to different temperatures. When you look through a thermal, you see all sorts of blobs from random rocks and trees and things. What happens is that the thermal may technically absorb the heat of your target and display it on screen, but you're unable to detect that as something of interest in the mix of thermal signatures in pretty much any environment. The maximum range I could tell something was there and not just an environmental artifact was around 1,000 yards with the 1280. At 800 yards, I could make the detection with the 640. The really big jump came between the 640 and the 320. At the lower 320 resolution, it took until 300 yards for me to make that detection. And the 256 for me to even know that there was a blob there was around 200 yards. It really surprised me how close something had to be, especially at the lower resolutions, to even detect it. There's just so much stuff in a normal non-lab environment that you really need the higher resolutions to differentiate between meaningful blob and non-meaningful blob. Recognition first occurred at 500 yards with the 1280. It was about this distance that I could recognize that it was a dog on a leash and not a raccoon or groundhog or something else. The 640 occurred at 300 yards the 320 occurred at 200 yards. The 256 occurred at 100 yards. Again, I'm just surprised how close these lower resolutions had to be to recognize what an object is. When I'm standing there and I look up from the thermal, I can see as plain as day in the daylight what I'm looking at. But through the thermal, it really took a, that closing of the distance for that recognition to happen. And remember, this is a 3x magnification. Identification first occurred at 300 yards with the 1280. The 640 could do this at around 200 yards. The 320 could do it around 100. The 256 could kind of do it at 50 yards, but I just didn't have the same level of confidence as the higher resolutions. My main takeaway from this is that thermal is not as long of a range tool as I was expecting. If you're trying to do this with like a 1x thermal device, divide all these numbers by three. It was surprising that it took a $3,000 thermal at 3x magnification to just barely make something out that I would have no problem shooting with an unmagnified red dot during the day. Thermal is an absolutely amazing technology, but it is important to remember that it is not perfect and it has limitations. I was also curious if thermal resolution would have an impact on the effectiveness for ways to hide from thermal. So me and some buddies went out and tried a bunch of different ways to hide from thermal to see what worked. The screen mesh had no impact whatsoever. The riot shield worked well, but it was hard to get full body coverage. The umbrella worked surprisingly well, but it's pretty directional still. The emergency blanket was so reflective, it showed up dark and was very easy to spot because it was so different from the environment. The ghillie suit didn't totally hide the heat signature, but it did obscure it enough where you probably wouldn't identify it as a person. 
The cigarette showed up in the thermal. You can see it better on the higher resolution. If you've never looked through smoke with a thermal, I definitely would recommend giving it a try. It is really cool to not be able to see something through smoke with your eyes and then grab a thermal and instantly see it as clear as day. It really feels like x-ray vision. Thermal is an amazing technology and absolutely a game-changing capability. This is the only superpower you can go out and actually buy. That said, it is still very expensive. With the rate technology is advancing, I really can't recommend any thermal resolution under 640. 640 really seems to be the minimum viable resolution for any sort of serious use. Obviously, if you can only afford the lower resolution, having something is better than having nothing. I think that buying a 320 or 256 resolution thermal is kind of like buying a 720p TV in 2025. While it may get the job done technically, it is already outdated and you should probably just wait until the 4K TVs go on sale at Costco. If you do get a lower than 640 resolution thermal today, my guess is in then three to five years, it's going to be basically e-waste or worth 10% of what you pay now. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, particularly if you have a thermal, what do you consider the effective range for how you use it? Thanks again ATN for providing the scopes I used in this video and thank you for watching.